Hello, everybody. How's it going? Really excited to be here. What up? Um, I think we have like 10 minutes to talk about ourselves, and then you guys can ask questions and whatnot. But I don't really, like, I'm going to talk a bit about myself, but I'm going to share a few things. And so the topic today is keep getting lucky, uh, using the word of the company. Yeah, right? Puns. We love that stuff. Uh, and um, it's really, the, 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 the hypothesis of what I'm going to share with you guys is sort of this essence of everybody around you seem to notice is getting really lucky and you're just not getting lucky. Like, why are these people getting so lucky all the time? Why are they all getting these, like, massive term sheets and $100 million valuations and not doing anything that generates any revenue but actually having some way to raise money that doesn't supposed to, is not supposed to exist? How do they do that? I'm kidding. Real business, like, core entrepreneurial sort of principles. Hopefully we can share a bit of that today. Um, but first, uh, a bit about my company. So we're called Keep. We're a mobile rewards network. Uh, what we essentially do is uh, you can play the games that you love and use apps like fitness apps, educational apps, uh, shopping and music, which are the genres that we're focusing on right now. And you can earn rewards serendipitously. So what we do is we sort of, it's called Keep. Uh, yeah. Um, what we do is we, we, we realize the problem was this, right? You can kind of see like you're in a banner ad just kick you out of the app. It's like really fucking annoying, right? And, and you're finishing a word in words with friends and just something comes up, right? And you're like, this is stupid. And so we, our insight was, hey, there's this achievement moment, this moment in time in which you're happy once you've done something meaningful in a game or an app, right? These moments are everywhere. They're phenomenal. They're like E moments. We call them E moments. You're really stoked, right? And, and when you're happy, that's amazing, right? And, and what if you got rewarded from, from, from brands like these, right? That's pretty cool, right? Right? Yeah, there we go. Um, and so this is what they look like. So essentially you can play, and, and, and there's no expectation. It's not like I say, hey, hit level 10, and you'll get this. Right? That's silly, because what happens is then you, you make the point of playing the game the reward. And all of a sudden, the intrinsic motivation of you actually being uh, able to enjoy that, that game or that app that you're using is now gone. Right? And that's the big problem right now with a lot of these rewards or these incentive things, because it's all designed to turn you into a Pavlovian dog. Right? And we don't want to do that. We said, hey, let's, let's, let's make it about what you were already doing, an existing pattern of behavior. And let's sort of just find these moments in which you're not being interrupted. It's a natural pause. You're stoked. You're like, yeah, right? And you get a reward. Right? It's good. So a bit about me. Uh, this is Counter-Strike Source. Uh, so I'm, 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 rather than sort of just go through the boring bio stuff, I'm going to talk about sort of a couple things that kind of made, I guess, kind of is my identity. And one of them is, of course, gaming. Now, I, uh, so I'm actually 21 right now. I just turned legal. Booyah. Yeah, I can actually drink. And uh, our VCs were able to legally buy me booze uh, the other day, which is great. Because uh, before, it was a huge liability. Uh, but I would still be at events, and I'd be holding a beer, and people would just be like, well, I'm legal in Canada. So, anyways. Uh, but, uh, but the reason why I skipped is because I was really bored in school. I skipped two grades in elementary school, two grades in high school. I graduated college when I was 18. Um, and, uh, and I did it all while playing a lot of Counter-Strike Source. Um, and I was like top in like three servers. And uh, I did Counter-Strike Source Surf. For those of you even more nerdy, if you actually know what that is, you are my, you are my friend. Uh, and it, it is awesome. So I, I did a lot of gaming. But here's how, to, how it all tied together. Uh, for those of you, yep. Yeah. Did I write any hacks? No, I didn't write any hacks. I just, I was a surfer. I just, I would make my own map and increase the grav, or actually decrease the gravity so people could jump really high and fuck around with people. You use a shotgun. The trick was you use a shotgun because shotgun, you don't really need to uh, be accurate. You just like shoot people in the face. But uh, for those of you who are also giant Photoshop nerds would know that this is uh, a bunch of lens flares, which is like the most noob uh, filter you can use. Uh, but Photoshop is actually a huge part of my identity as well. I'm a designer as, as, as well as I, I learned business in college as well. So I kind of, I'm a bit like a designer business founder. I don't even know how to categorize it, like a biz, biz founder. Um, and uh, uh, Photoshop actually was something that you could do a lot better and more quickly by being a Counter-Strike player. Because I actually really like to use the sniper rifle. And, and people call it the op, right? It's op whoring. And basically when you're, I'm really nerding out right now, I, I'm so sorry. But when you, when you use the, the, the sniper rifle, you basically have to move your mouse across the screen and eyeball where someone's head is to have a headshot. 
right? Or else you're going to die, right? Because you're just camping all the time. So with that, I became extremely accurate with Photoshop. So gaming makes you a better designer. Um, and here's another image. That, not part, typhoons are not part of my identity, but this was kind of what, um, as a sheltered Asian child, uh, kind of got me out of my, my shell. So my parents are very, like, you know, just, just made, tried, to, tried to make the perfect childhood for me when I was in Vancouver. I was born and raised in Vancouver. And Vancouver, for those of you who visited, is gorgeous, right? It's like, it's just a child's, you know, heaven. Like you got playgrounds everywhere and, you know, you know, you know, big parks and, you know, you can play baseball. It's just the most cliche child. Anyway, so I decided to sort of just be like, fuck that, let me go traveling. So when I was in school, I decided to go to Singapore for exchange. I know I'm Asian, right? But I can't speak any Asian languages, so I decided, hey, let's go to Singapore where they all speak English, right? And I should be just fine. But for those of you who actually been to Singapore, they don't actually speak English there. It's called Singlish. And when you actually land, you're like, this is supposed to be English. I'm supposed to understand this, but I don't really get what they're saying. But Singapore is amazing because I was able to then travel my ass off and kind of go and just see as many places as, you, as I could. And the beautiful thing about Singapore, for those of you who are thinking about going to Asia, make Singapore your launch pad because basically you can fly to anywhere within an hour. That's like cool. Like you go to Vietnam and like an hour flight. You go to Bangkok and like an hour flight. It's great. So I love that. So that actually got me out of my shell. Typhoon images there is because when I actually tried, went to Taiwan uh, randomly for a few days just because we wanted to. Because when you go on exchange, you don't really study, right? You're there to like travel and have fun. And, 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 and it was like a pass-fail program. So I was like, yeah, I'll have to do this really well in the final exam and we're fine, right? So we just basically been traveling for five months. But when we were in Taiwan, I got stuck in a typhoon. And as much as it's kind of miserable to get stuck in a typhoon, I remember this as being one of the most prominent experiences that made me realize just how, just how adventurous you could be if you just throw yourself into something and just jump in head first. And, and I remember very distinctly being at one of the palaces there that we were just touristing around. And I noticed that there's this like, you know, board kind of like that. And there was literally an icon of a, like a cyclone, like a dotted line. And then like Taipei right there. And I was like, wait, so is that happening? They're like, yeah, it's happening like in an hour. I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> and basically I was the idiot who decided to run outside and, and dance in the rain, and I got really sick because I'm an idiot. So I moved down to the valley in 2010 now, yeah, 2010, uh, to work at Dig, and this was the beer fridge at Dig, and uh, they did not want to serve me alcohol because <laughs> that was the HR lady. She put that sign up. She was like, you're not going to get anything. But uh, so I, I ended up getting laid off from Dig in, in, in 2010, and it was right before Mother's Day. So it was May 15th, I think. And I remember going back home and telling my, my parents, and my mom told me it was like the worst Mother's Day present that she'd ever gotten. Um, but every Mother's Day after that, since then, I've tried to made it, make it up to her. So, so here's a few. So I'm just going to go through a few. There's only, I think, like five or four. But uh, how do you keep getting lucky, right? And sort of like, so there's a series of lucky events that have occurred that's kind of brought us to at least perceived to be lucky events. I mean, naturally, of course, everybody will, will sort of make, you know, there's a lot of entrepreneurs, but oh yeah, it just happened, you know? And it just, we just, we knew it was going to be amazing, right? It just doesn't, doesn't work that way. There's a lot of shit that happens in the background and sort of setting yourself up is incredibly important. So number one is start playing, right? In the background is a scared lol cat. But... <laughs> you didn't get it. But start playing, right? You just have to be in the game before you... There's a lot of people who are like entrepreneurs, right? Who just are like, oh, I'm going to have a thousand coffees and figure out what I want to do next. Just fucking start your company. Just do it. Go to a lawyer. They'll happily put down their time, right? And be like, hey, you know, I'm going to help you start up your company. And when you raise funding, we'll then bill you out of your ass. But basically, what, but they, they will do that for you. Just start it. Just start doing stuff, right? It's so much, like, you, you won't know what's going to happen until you actually start. Stop having coffees and stop emailing me about that. Um, <laughs> no idea how many people email me. Oh, can I have a coffee? Blah, blah. Just start it and then tell me how your product did and then I'll help you, right? Number two, surround yourself with other lucky people. So in the background is Victoria's Secret Models. I uh, sort of uh, tie Victoria's Secret Models to luck. So I kind of just put that in. Anyway, so surround yourself with very lucky people. Um, this is incredibly important. So when you realize that there are people who are around you that, that seem to be getting really like, just, just spend more time with them. Be in the same area. Be in events like this, you know, co-working spaces. That stuff's really important in the early stages. Early stages of your company. Don't do it later on. But in the beginning, make sure you're around enough of these people so that serendipitous events occur. That's incredibly important, right? Because once you are able to sort of see that, that it kind of rubs off on you. Like all this, all, all their habits. Like when you're in this environment, it's just like, man, 
there's a dude who's still here. Man, I gotta work harder, right? So it's like this whole social, it fucks with your head, but it makes you spend more time and, and it makes you work harder and it makes you sort of feel like there's something that you need to be striving for that's much bigger and you mix, it helps you, it just rubs off you to think much bigger, which is the next one, which is choose a really, really big field. And why I say this is that a lot of the time when you start something, you won't know exactly what you're going to end up doing, right? You hear about the pivot. <coughs> oh, ugh, pivot. Uh, ugh, I don't like that word. But basically, what happens is you want to set yourself up so that you're allowed to make different moves and sort of position it as being iterative, right? So when you choose something much bigger, then you can start doing things that don't look like a pivot, but may actually be a pivot, if you know what I mean. But when you're able to position yourself that way, people understand that you're now creating something that has the potential to capture in a massive market, right? So for example, for us, we decided to choose mobile, gaming, and advertising. <laughs> and arguably, three of the industries that are other than advertising, in some, in some cases, but that are doing this. And so when, when, when like, like I like to say in mobile right now, I don't know, maybe right now, but like maybe last year, but like when you made an app or something, it was just growing so fast that you could like fall on your face and still make money, right? Like it's, it's one of those things where if an industry is growing so big and so fast, you should tie yourself to that, at least see what it would be like if you were in a macro environment that was super favorable to what you were creating. I, I, I skipped one, I know the numbers are kind of messed up, but uh, number five, uh, make a game with less players. And in this background image is actually a, a, what is called the tandem surfing. You guys probably never seen this sport live, I've seen it live, it is amazing. But there's, so, so I actually met the world champions in tandem surfing. So what is tandem surfing? It's literally a dude carrying a lady and twirling around in the air while he's surfing. It is fucking nuts, it is insane. It is the craziest sport ever. But I met the world champions and there's something like, and, and by the way, this is totally aside, but the names, their names are Bear and Talon, I swear. The guy's name is Bear and her name is Talon, I know, you can't make this shit up. But they are, the world champions. They are, they are the champions. And, and, and champions of how many people playing and use, like actually capable of doing this sport? I think there's like 30 people in the world championships, right? So it's like, you're gonna be the top if you're really, really, really good. And, 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 and I'm not saying to just to cheat. I'm saying when you, when you are able to create a market that you're just owning, that you created, right? You invented the sport in many ways and they invented many moves in that sport right? You're able to sort of show people that, hey, this is something that I commanded, this is something that I created, and you're able to, again, just really prove to people and, 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 then, and then scare people, right? You will scare people when you create a new market because there's this thing called blue skies theory. You don't know what's going to happen. Like, if I created a market, it could be worth a dollar, it could be worth a billion dollars. You don't know, right? That's the best part. When you create a market, People just don't know how big it can become, and then you have, you're employing the most, the most effective of all social forces, which is FOMO, for those of you who know what that is, fear of missing out. Number six, remove unlucky from your vocabulary. And I, I, I see this a lot, right? There are people like, oh man, I'm so unlucky. Ah, man, this shit's always, it's not working out. Fuck. And the thing is, here's the thing, you have to realize, being unlucky is just a really lucky way to learn. Yeah. Uh, but it's all this perception thing, right? <laughs> no, but it, it's a perception thing because like, the really unlucky person will be like when they get into a car accident. Let's say there's a really lucky person and a really unlucky person getting into a car accident, right? The unlucky person will say, oh, I'm so unlucky, I'm such a klutz, right? The lucky person will go, I'm so lucky, I'm alive, right? So there's, this is a very classic just example. I'm just pointing that out. But, but that's very important to build through, through perception, when you help people and you lead people, you have to realize that it's not all, always just you know, fluffing things up and sort of sprinkling pixie dust over stuff that's actually negative, but being very realistic and saying, but we had a chance. At least I knew that this is not what we wanted to do. You know what I mean? When you're able to sort of, you know, not knowing, so knowing what not to do is probably just as important as knowing what to do, right? In many cases, you'll learn these lessons through failures and trials and tribulations when you're doing things. Number seven, it's all about relative luck, right? So this guy in the back, like, Oh, so unlucky, first world problems. You know, stretch limo SUV getting stuck on a hill. But like, it's relative, right? Because everything that you do is progressive when you, relative to what you had started before, right? So always mark with your team any level of progress that even externally, like as an entrepreneur, you're gonna always be motivated by this, this fact of being awesome, right? You always want everything to be perfect, right? You strive for the best as the founder. But remember this, you may be motivated by just the, only, the top of the top, 
but everybody else wants to celebrate sort of the steps along the way. And the journey is incredibly important. And this is something that I really sucked at. And I still kind of suck at it. You ask my team, be like, is Brian really good at sort of like, you know, you know complimenting? I, you know, I, I squeeze a few out here and there because I, like, I just have such high standards. But I know that, you know, when you're able to sort of show this relative progress, people really celebrate that. And it's incredibly important in motivating your team. And I know it sounds so obvious, but people don't do it enough. And not doing shit like, so this happens a lot with some entrepreneurs where you'll literally be in a feedback session and you'll say like, oh, you did an awesome job at this, but I have something I have a problem with. Just separate those two things. <laughs> try to celebrate and then have feedback sessions in other cases. So just try to shepherd those. Number eight, use what normally gets you lucky. This is incredibly important. And what I mean by this is exactly what it's showing. What you normally use to get lucky with members of the opposite sex or the same sex if that's how you swing. Uh, it's totally cool. But that's... That's, that's important because what I've, I actually normally, this is, well, if you apply, you won't, you're all founders, so you probably won't apply for jobs. But when people apply for jobs at Keep and I, I interview, then the first question I ask is, what, what's your superpower? Right? And what I mean by that is, what is that thing that you use? Everybody has a big strength. That's that thing that every, all your friends say, oh, you know, Sally's really good at, you know, making jokes or, you know, this guy's really good at doing, you know, whatever, organize. Or, like, just some, some people will say things that, that just, the thing that, make, that identifies you in terms of what you're just really, you seem to be really, really good at. Use it, right? It's really important to understand what that superpower is, that thing that you use. Um, because if you're able to focus on that strength and hone in on it, the key here is to find people who can help complement your weaknesses rather than trying to fix them all the time. Because what will naturally make you successful is going to be baked in, at least for the time being. You're not going to be able to, to, to change that uh, immediately. It's a long-term progress a map, but you need to make sure you have that one thing that you're really good at and really focus on that. Number nine is make people lucky. This is so important. It's, I mean, karma. I mean, just, I mean, like the non-religious principle of it. But like the whole thing is when you go around and you help as many people as you can, right, it'll all come back to you. And this is the network effect when you guys are talking about this stuff. It's, it just, but it comes down to how many people you help. The reason why San Francisco and the Valley is the way it is right now is because people keep track. They, 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 they know. They will know. People will remember if you did something for them. If they don't, they'll get weeded out. They'll get voted off the island. Those people will disappear. And you've seen that happen before. There are people who just leech and leech and ah, and then they, they disappear because they're not giving it back. But the whole, the reason why this system works the way it does is because of this never-ending cycle of continued, you know, virtuous you know, sort of gratitude and, 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 and contribution, right? One person will do an intro, you do another intro here, you give a few thoughts here, you help them, you know, set up something there, and then they get back. And not like, oh, I'm gonna call a favor, dude, that thing you did last time, I'm gonna have to, you know, use that currency. No, it just, it's just the way you do it as friends, right? It's gonna happen that way. They'll remember. If they don't, they're gonna get voted off the island. Just remember that. Number 10, eventually, you know, the serendipity, right, is going to be perceived as luck, but I call it sort of generating serendipity, right? And the most important thing here is that you can create this luck. That's the whole point I'm trying to make. You can create it, and you're doing it already by being here. Now, I think Einstein or someone, I totally forgot who it was, but someone said this thing, was that you don't judge a fish by how well it climbs a tree, right? So if you're an entrepreneur, and you're in tech, and you're consumer web, you better be here, because everybody around you is going to judge you properly and help you the way that they know how. But if you go, if you, it's the same way. You want to be a banker. You want to be a, an actress or an actor. You go wherever. The environment is incredibly important, right? But you can create that luck. And by the way, that's, a, that's me skydiving. I didn't die, so I'm very lucky, right? Um, it's great. So get lucky. Thank you very much, guys.